we are working in spreadsheets looking at Microsoft Excel and let's look at absolute cell referencing let's first look at an example of why absolute cell referencing would be needed so let's first find the problem so over here we've got a program um, where we've got some names and amount raised and we want to work out they're going to get a 15 percent discount so I'm going to put a formula in here to work out that discount so I'm going to say okay so 15 percent off so 15% off means we're going to refer to this block here, which has the 15 in it. And I want to convert that to a percentage. In other words, I want to divide it by 100. So that will now make 15 into 15%. Now I want 15% of the amount that this person raised. So I will say then multiply, because that's what of means, multiplied by the amount raised, which is the value in this block. C4. And the reason why I use the blocks is that if I can change this this value, it'll change all the formulas for me automatically. So 15% of the amount raised. That's what I want. And if I press enter, and I get 55 rand and 65 cents. Now that seems reasonable. That seems like it is 15%. And that's great. The problem comes when I copy this formula down. So I'm going to copy it down. And then all the formulas go haywire. So like, what's happening here? What's going on? So this is why we need absolute cell referencing. You see, in the example that we just did, we took the blue block in D1, as you can see there, and divided by 100 and times it by C4. Now, the problem is when we copy down, when the moment you copy a formula down, then the cells automatically refer to new blocks. It copies the formula down. It refers to the cells going down. So if I go to this block, the next block, it will then say, take the value in D2, which you would notice that that 15 is now, the, the block that it's referring to is now, yeah, we, it's got nothing in it. We wanted it to stay at that 15. But in this case, we wanted the C4 from this block to move to C5. Because when you copy down, we want to refer to the next person and so on. So that's basically the problem that we've got. We've got value, we've got a formula where we want certain cells to remain static in other words stay stay the way you are and the other ones we want to be able to change as dynamically as we move them down so how do we do that well let's first understand exactly what it means when we copy cells across and up and down so yeah we've got a formula a3 plus d5 so what we're going to do now is if we have to copy this formula across the moment you copy across a formula or go across to the cells on on the, the right of it what changes is the letters will change that it's referring to so for example if i copy this across those letters a and d will move up so for every block i move across they will move up one in the alphabet so if i move it across one the a will change to a b and the d will change to e if i copy it to two cells across then the A will change to a C and the D will change to F and so on. And the same works if you copy in backwards from, from right to left. It, then the cells will go down in letters, in other words, from C to A, depending on how many blocks across you are copying. So that's what happens when you copy formulas across. Now, what happens when you copy formulas down? So if you're going to copy a formula down, then the numbers will change. So if I copy that formula down one block, then the 3 will change to a 4 and the 5 will change to a 6. If I copy that formula down two blocks, then the 3 will change to a 5 and the 5 will change to a 7. So when you copy formulas down, the numbers will change. And the same will happen if I copy up, then the numbers will go get smaller, however many blocks you move up. So that's the nature of when you copy formulas across and down. So in this example what happens is we want to use absolute cell referencing and for that we use the dollar symbol to lock what is to the right of it wherever you place that dollar symbol whatever is to the right of it will be locked so for example if i put a dollar next to the a over there that what's happening now is that dollar is going to lock that a and what that means is if i copy across that A will not change. So if I crop it across one block, okay, just one block, you'll notice that the formula keeps the A locked. It doesn't allow it to change. But I want you to notice the other 
block that was referred to, the other cell that was referred to in that formula, that D5, did you notice that the D changed to an E because it wasn't locked? So only the cells that are referenced with a dollar, that have a dollar in it, will be locked. And it's only what is to the right of it that will be locked. So if, for example, if I copy this formula down, if I decide I want to copy this formula down, then it actually doesn't matter about that dollar because the dollar has locked the A. And when you copy down, that A would still stay there. It's the numbers that change. So that dollar doesn't affect the number. So that's what the dollar does. It locks whatever is to the right of it. Now, if we know that, if we know that we can lock the letter, what happens if we lock the number? In other words, we put a dollar in front of the number. So the number's to the right of it. In this case, the three is locked. And then that means when I copy across, it doesn't make a difference because if you remember, when we copy across, the letters of the, of the cell references change. So that A would still become a B because the A is not locked anymore and the D will become an E because they're not locked. The 3 would never have changed anyway because we're copying across. However, if we are copying down, now we have a situation where that 3 that's been locked will come into play. So if we copy it down one block, you'll notice that the 3 stays the same even though we've copied it down one block. But again, let's look at the other reference to a cell in that formula. That D5, do you notice that the 5 changed to a 6 because there was no lock there. So that's things to be very aware of. Now what you can also do, and you can put both a lock around the letter and the number. And if that's the case, if you copy it across, it won't change. And if you copy it down, it won't change. That's a way to make sure that it'll never change. So that's a very good way of locking that cell. So they're both locked. The A will never change. The 3 never change. So if I copy across, then the A won't change. The 3 wouldn't have changed anyway. But the other cell, you'll notice D5 does change to an E5. And if I copy it down, well, the, the 3 will not change. The A doesn't get affected, but the D six well the six of there you can see has changed from d5 so those locks means it will never change without copy across or if i copy down now if you want to put those dollars in you can put them in manually or you can just press the f4 key and it will actually put the dollars in for you as long as wherever your cursor is that's the cell that will be changed that's the cell reference that will be changed so let's go try this out in excel so let's first go fix our mistake that we had from the first uh, example to so over here we've got d1 divided by 100 times about c4 so in this case we definitely want the c4 to change to c5 and c6 so so we don't want anything to happen to the c4 we want it to stay the way it is and not be locked but that d1 we want it to be locked so what i'm going to do is i'm put my cursor on the d1 i'm going to click over there you can see it's actually in between doesn't really matter as long as it's somewhere near it and i'm going to press the f4 key if I press the F4 key, it will put in the dollars for you. By default, it puts in both dollars around the D and the 1, around the letter and the number. Now, if I press F4 again, I can actually, actually toggle through the different options. So the one option is if I put a dollar just around the number, and if I press it again, it'll put a dollar just in front of the letter, and if I press it one more time, it'll take the dollars away. So you can toggle between those options. I'm just going to make it all the dollars around it. So there we go. Now the little tip I normally tell my students, whenever you've got a table like this, where you're referring to values in the table, whenever you're referring to a block outside of the table, that normally needs a absolute cell reference where we've got the dollar signs. So you'll notice that the red block is inside the table, so we don't mind it copying down. But that blue block outside the table, outside the table here, we don't want that to be copied down, so we're going to put dollars around it. So I apply the dollars to that formula, and you'll notice it doesn't affect the first cell because it was always right. But now when I copy it down, you'll notice that all my formulas are working now. So over here, you can see that the C5, it went from C4 to C5, so it did move down, but that D1 stayed locked. So therefore, it didn't change. Let's go look at some more examples. So over here, I've got a whole bunch of numbers. I want to count how many level ones there are, but I'm going to use this block as my reference. So I'm going to say equals count if, and I want to count if how many level ones there are. So I'm going to look in this range, and then I'm going to say comma this block here, this one. Now I want that F11 to become F F12 and F13 when I copy down, but this C3 to C14. 
that whole cell reference you'll see when i copy that down so that you can see the blue block it's selected there it's perfect for the first one but when i look at this option if i take the blue block there you see the blue block has shifted down so i don't want that whole block to be moving down so i'm going to put my mouse on that c3 i'm going to press f4 to make dollars around that one i'm also going to put dollars around the c14 so that's putting absolute cell referencing around the entire cell range so what that means if i copy that formula down that cell range c3 to c14 won't copy down it won't change as i copy down to it won't make a c4 to c15 it'll just say stay c3 to c14 and if i copy that down now all my formulas work you can see over here it's still referring to that blue block over there from 3 to 14. now over here you're going to move across so i'm going to say equals count if we want to count if the number of a's in this block so i'm going to say comma that a block so I'm going to put close now, but the problem is it works for that one. You can see it refers to that blue block, but the moment I copy across, it gives me naught and said, but there must be, there are bees there. Why? Because when I copied across, it moved the blue block across one. So in that case, we want to put dollars around that cell reference. Now, if because we, it's moving across, we actually just need dollars around the letters because we don't want the letters to change we don't mind about the numbers because we're copying across so if i just did the letters that would work too okay so there you can see there's six of them as well there okay so the same with this example that we did previously if we wanted to we didn't have to put the dollars around the the actual letters because in this case we were copying the formulas down so in this as long as the letters are blocked are locked we can copy it down and it should still work now the last little example I want to show you with absolute self-referencing is this block here. Now I put a formula in there which I've hidden. So let's go put it in and let's make the text so we can see it. So okay, so there's a little formula in here. We don't care what the number is, but you can see there is a dollar around the five and there's a dollar around the G. So there's the formula. Look at the formula there. Okay. I'm gonna copy that formula from this block here to this block here okay so i'm going to want you to pause the video and look at the formula there look at that formula and i want you to try to predict what the formula is going to be when i copy it to this block knowing that when you copy across the letters increase and when you copy it down the numbers increase so see if you can work it out pause the video see if you can work it out have you worked it out yet okay now let's see if we can work it out so for this case, we know that we are, to get to that block, we are copying across one, two, three times. So this formula is going to, I'm going to write it over here. So if we copy it across three times, you'll notice that the letters will change. So the C will copy three times. So it'll go C, D, E, F. So the first for, part of that formula will be F. Okay. So I'm going to put an F there. So there's an F. And then the dollar five because the five is all we'll get to that and then there's a plus sign so let's just do the letters first i'm just doing it over here plus now four i'm gonna make this text so we can actually see the results there there plus now the g won't change at all when i move across why because it's got a lock on it so i actually don't have to even change the g i can just say that G is going to stay static. It's never going to change because it's locked. That dollar locks it. So those are going to be the letters. Now the numbers, if I copy the numbers, that's been down. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, wait, one, two, three, four, five, five to get in line with that. So we moved across three, but moving down five. So I'm moving down five. So that means the numbers must change by five. Now that first one, that five is not going to change because it's locked by that dollar. So over here, we are just going to put in the dollar five that that five will not change because it's locked but the formula for the 11 that 11 is going to change to 12 13 14 15 16 so that g is going to have a 16 after it because the 16 isn't locked so that's my prediction for the formula so i'm going to copy this formula i'm going to press copy and then i'm going to come over here and i'm going to paste the formula and although we don't care what the number is let's look at the formula f5 g16 there we go we worked out how many times it moves across and how many times it moves down and there we go hopefully you got that answer and if you did well done for more videos on excel go to our youtube channel subscribe leave a comment 
leave a like. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.